Howdy y'all, Q here. Today we're going to be doing a slightly deeper dive into the SH7 and the SM7, which was in my last video. Let's get to it. If you made it this far, welcome to the Q Show. Gonna learn a thing, it's probably in the title. Alright, we're here. Here's what we're going to go over today. We're going to talk about the two pedals. We're going to be talking about what's going on inside them on a very macro level. And then we're going to use that knowledge to kind of get one to kind of sort of start taking on the qualities of the other with just a tube screamer. And yeah, here we go. First things first, let's talk about the SM7. The SM7 is a really uh, cute circuit. It's kind of like, a it's got the tube screamer style clipping section. Of course, the EQ is completely different, but to me, we're going to talk about the differences of the two pedals. And the big thing is that the drive knob on this one actually directly interacts with the gain stage and a feedback loop. So I can demonstrate that by this little demo here. Check this out. If we get this just right. You hold a note and move the drive knob up it directly will start adding more hair because it's directly increasing gain to those diodes in the feedback loop this also has a little hopefully the dope piece of graphics annotating this there's a little thing going on right before it that actually is creating a mid hump boost between the mid hump boost the clipping section and the eq it actually increases the transient of the guitar, which allows you to get that like that chuggish, that chugging thing going. Same principle that a tube scraper into an amp would be doing, but it's all inside the pedal. So it, it's actually doing a lot of work for you. It's a cool idea. And that's kind of what the end result is this, of course. Does the thing. The SH7, however, is a little different. You'll see here that the schematic looks very similar, but actually, where the mid hump occurs on the SH, on the SM7, on the SH7, it actually is is a, its own clipping stage. It's happening right off the bat, and that's pretty much responding to the guitar input, which is super open spectrum, and that makes it a little sludgier, makes it a little less defined. I'm, I'll try not to use an ambiguous term. Makes it a little less defined, so you lose the transient because it's just clipping right off the bat, and once you clip it, the transient goes away. You would want to develop that transient before clipping as much as possible to make it tighter. But this was done on purpose because with detuned instruments, they're just super they're putting out so much power anyway that especially back when this was made you're gonna you would be leaning towards more like i guess like corn or something like that where it's a little just deeper and more 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 uh sludgy is really the only word i can think of more yeah you're just really running the transient down and playing up the largeness of the sound and we can verify that by doing this check it out you can lower this do the same thing i hold a note as you raise this you'll see that the it's really not getting much hairier. It's just getting louder because that section has diodes further down the line that will eventually clip when it hits a certain volume. So eventually you hear the hair start kicking in. Now, of course, with the guitar, any reasonable volume that happens pretty much immediately. But it's interesting that because they approach these two things completely differently, the sound is so different. And if you look at these two schematics, they definitely have a lot in common. Of course, there's different values to tune the sound for a different type of instrument or for a different purpose. But I think it's very cool to note that these two pedals actually have so much in common despite sounding sonically in different universes. So what have we learned? We learned that increasing the transient before the clipping stage can give you a slightly tighter sound. Anytime you've put a tube screamer into a lightly driven amp, you're exemplifying this concept. But we can do it with these pedals right here. So I've got a tube screamer, and I'm going to lower the drive and probably the level a little. I'm still going to keep the tone up because I want the high end transient to hit the SH7 as hard as I can. So I'm going to do it first without. 
Let me turn this on. So, of course, it's, it's not going to sound exactly like the SM7. It's not. They're, we're adding a lot more and a lot different things to the circuit. But as you can see here, those two pedals definitely added some of that percussiveness back. And if you've got any super like blown out fuzz type pedal at home, consider the class the classic combinations of a Ratter or Tube Screamer before it is actually doing exactly this. So if you're designing, if you're doing like sound design for a recording, you can get way more specific in ways that maybe don't make as much sense live. So you can have the Tube Screamer at a volume that like right now, it's actually dropping the volume when I turn it on. But I'm kind of massaging the sound in a way that is going to hit the seventh heaven in a way that gives it a maximum kind of smack before that clipping stage. If I raise the level, you start losing a little bit of that. These are the more advanced sound design things you can do if you're recording in your studio or like in the, I guess in the bedroom, if you will, or it just prepping or if you're just creating a sound for a track. Sometimes sound design for a recording and sound design for live sometimes don't have everything in common. I guess that's just kind of it. That's the big thing. Don't be afraid to experiment with your pedals in ways that have some direction. You're not just like, oh, let's see what happens. It's kind of like you're purposefully leading towards a goal. And there you have it. What'd you think? Did you learn something? I was, it was kind of fun for me to dig into these two pedals and, and figure out exactly what was making them tick under the hood. I still have a ton to learn, but I'm really happy to take the little things I do learn and give them back to you guys. If you watch this video, um, you're either a big fan or a nerd like me, so thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'm Q, and this has been The Q Show.